In this episode of the FXTM educational series, we're going to be taking a closer look at the concepts of support and resistance. Support and resistance are really defined by levels at which the price is rising to and then subsequently falling or failing to break through over time. So if there is a particular price level that the currency pair continues to reach or approach and then it fails again and fails again and fails again, it's more likely to continue to hold in the future. So investors would look at that range as a level of resistance or a bit of a ceiling on the price. Now support is very similar in that it is a price floor at which the currency pair continues to approach or nearly reach or maybe even temporarily exceed by a little bit, uh, by a narrow margin, and yet continues to bounce back up off of that level. So we would look at that as support. So investors would look at that particular price level as a point at which it's likely that the currency pair, at least in the short term, is not likely to go beyond or to go below. Now, there are a couple of uh, key concepts about support and resistance that investors should definitely remember. So number one is that support and resistance, one of the things we are really concerned about is history. And what we mean by that is that how many times has the price gotten to that level and then not been able to either break above or break below? The more often that happens, the more likely it is that that level is going to remain a support or resistance level. So something that's been only approached once or twice is relatively weaker than a price level that has been approached several times and the price has not been able to get beyond that level. Uh, number two is going to be these levels are more of a range. So inevitably we have to assign some kind of a price level to support or resistance, but we should think about it as not a to the pip point at which the price is not likely to go beyond or go below and then once it does it's been invalidated, but rather a fairly wide range where we'd want to see good evidence that the price was either closing above and invalidating that resistance level or closing below and invalidating that support level before considering that it's actually been crossed. The, finally, the last thing that we're concerned about here with support and resistance is that they will switch places. So as an example, if a price has been respecting a particular price floor or something like that, and then comes back to that level after having breached it. So it's coming back up to that level from underneath, then it is quite likely that it will act as a subsequent level of resistance. By the same token, of course, if a price has gone finally beyond a resistance level and then returns back to it from up above, it's very likely that that same level is going to act as a support pivot. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of support and resistance. We'll start with this one on the Euro to the US dollar. This is a pretty classic example on the euro of the price running into a resistance level that is defined at a point at which the price was unable to break through. So you can see it, the price didn't always reach resistance to the pip, but it was less and less likely that the price would actually get through. Now this is a good example of a support level on the yen. This is through 2015. What's interesting about this is that, of course, the price kept returning to that level and it was unlikely to break through for a while. And as you can see here on the right-hand side of the chart, eventually the price did meet a couple of lows where each low, the second low, was lower than the one that came before it. But at the same time, technical oscillators, so here I've added a stochastic oscillator to this, was forming higher lows. So that's actually a bullish divergence. It's an important technical signal that traders like to pay attention to and it helped to confirm that support level. So just like we might look for bullish candlestick patterns or something like that at a support level to confirm it, well, technical signals like this from an indicator or an oscillator can also serve a very similar purpose. Finally, here are a couple of examples of support or resistance changing places. So here with the Canadian dollar to the Japanese yen, there was a support level that was in play for a while. And then over here on the right-hand side of my chart, as you can see, we finally did get a pretty clear breakout below that support level. But the price began to rally a little bit, but it only got to that former support level before treating it as a resistance. This is pretty typical behavior, and we would treat it the same way that we would any other resistance level, because we know that the price has been pivoting at that point in the past, and it's likely that investors will still remember that point, and the price is likely to treat it as resistance and subsequently decline. Now this example of the dollar to the Canadian dollar 
we can see resistance that was in play for a short period of time. So it definitely was a confirmed level of resistance. Eventually, however, the price after decline came back up through that resistance level, firmly closing above it, but then returning back to it. So in this case, we would still know that that was formally a resistance level or a pivot point at which the price was changing direction. Well, once it's above it and coming back down to it, we would expect that it has a very high likelihood of acting as support, which in fact occurred. You can see that here. So let's do a little bit of summary. Support and resistance can sometimes turn into a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everybody is looking at the same levels. We're all expecting that the price may change direction at that point, and quite often it does. So knowing where those support and resistance levels are will help us to not only identify entry opportunities for a new trade or where we might prioritize a particular technical signal, but also to understand where a trader is more at risk. Longs being more at risk at resistance and shorts being more at risk at support helps us to do a better job of managing the level of exposure in the portfolio overall. Now also remember that we think about support and resistance levels as being fairly wide ranges. So we don't want to just constrain ourselves to a single price point, but rather consider that we want to see definitive evidence that the price really has moved beyond a particular support level or resistance level before considering it to be invalidated. And then finally, we know that if the price eventually does invalidate a particular price level, so in this case, let's say a support is broken and then returns back to it from underneath or in the case of a broken resistance level returns back to that resistance level from up above that it's likely to take on a different role so it's likely to flip roles in this case support we would expect to serve as resistance once it's been broken so put together this is a great tool for us to be able to at a glance understand where the price is likely to be in the future and where it's likely not to be so we can do a much better job understanding what kind of opportunities do we have as well as what level of risk or exposure do we have in the portfolio.